Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Alex, thank you very much for your warm introduction. Uh, could I acknowledge the traditional owners on whose land we're gathered here today? Uh, could I also acknowledge uh, Vivian, your president? I'd like to acknowledge Stephen Miles, because Stephen's an Al Gore trained uh, presenter uh, among your membership. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge Anna Kiernan, uh, who's the lead ACF staff member uh, working on this initiative. And I'd really like to acknowledge a wonderful team that I've just uh, had the chance to meet in your offices who are working on this. I think some are right at the back there. But um, you, you've got a wonderful staff team working on this, this initiative. Um, I thought I might start with just a little thought. Uh, I don't know how many here watch uh, the great Australian intellectual uh, Kath from Kath and Kim. But there was a, a, a program in Kath and Kim late last year that dealt with the environment and climate change. And if I'm recalling properly, uh, Kath said, uh, Al Gore presses all my buttons in a non-fossil fuel sort of way. <laughs> and I think when you have a program like Kath and Kim starting to highlight the importance of climate change, you know the issue is one that's worrying and interesting most Australians. Um, but today, what we're really talking about is not just awareness of how important this issue is, but how we can do something about it. And it's a great honour and pleasure uh, for the Australian Conservation Foundation to be joining with your union with what I think is a wonderful, innovative outreach initiative uh, to your membership. And hopefully what it'll do, well I'm very confident, it'll help people make changes in their workplace, uh, at home, become more aware of this crucial issue, importantly what we can all do to make a difference. Uh, and as well as that, obviously really engage your members strongly in an important and very innovative initiative from your union. So it's a great honour for us to be on this. Let me just remind us why this issue is so important, but I also want to come into why it's a time of crucial opportunity for action on climate change. As Queenslanders, I probably don't need to say this because in fact Queensland is particularly vulnerable to climate change. Uh, some of the scientific predictions are that if we don't act to avoid dangerous climate change, we'll see more droughts, more severe droughts, more problems with water. And we've all had a taste of that in Brisbane uh, recently, and those problems are still with us in some ways. Um, we'll also see, perversely, more cyclones, more severe cyclones, more flooding as well. And once again, I don't need to remind us that we're susceptible to those issues here in Queensland. We'll also see potential health problems because with warming, the zone, for example, for dengue fever, fever uh, will potentially move south to Sydney. At the moment, it's in far north Queensland. It could become a serious issue for Brisbane as well if we don't act to tackle climate change. Now, of course, this is a profound economic and jobs issue as well. Because think about this, uh, Queensland <coughs> depends quite a deal on the tourism sector and the health of the natural environment for its economy. The Great Barrier Reef brings in, through tourism and nature-based recreation, over $2 billion a year in income to Queensland, and there's over 60,000 direct jobs generated from tourism and nature-based recreation on the reef. And Many of those jobs are for younger Australians as well. Uh, now that's just one example, and the Great Barrier Reef itself is highly sensitive to climate change. Unfortunately, coral reefs, if you get uh, a warm body of water washing over them, they're actually, most in this room will know this, a coral reef, the actual animals, the polyps, the reef builders, are really two animals. They're in the jellyfish family, and they've got algae living inside them, and the algae produce most of the food. They're a symbiotic relationship. And if you get a warm body of water washing over a reef, what happens is the algae inside the polyp get stressed, release toxins, and the little tiny um, jellyfish-like polyp spits the algae out, but it can't survive without them for more than two or three days, 
and you get the phenomena called coral bleaching because they lose their colour. It's the algae that gives them the colour and they'll die. And we're already seeing bleaching events on the reef and unfortunately the predictions are that if we don't avoid dangerous climate change they're going to become more common and more devastating uh, and we could end up with a barrier reef dramatically degraded which would be a tragedy. So of anywhere on earth as Queenslanders we've probably got more interest in the world moving on this issue than most. So it's quite crucial we move. On the other hand we've got plenty of opportunity to tackle this issue because what does tackling climate change involve? It involves us reducing greenhouse pollution. Uh, it involves us having a cleaner and more efficient economy. Uh, it involves us developing new ways of doing things, new ways of thinking, new ways of behaving, all of which can help generate jobs as well. So there's real opportunities to be a less wasteful society as we move to tackle this issue. Now just think about water for a minute, because I think we've now learned how precious water is with some tough droughts over much of Australia, uh, and particularly here in South East Queensland. And we know it's really important not to waste water. We haven't reached the same level of awareness and action with energy yet. And when we waste energy, we're producing a lot of greenhouse pollution. So there's real opportunities in tackling this issue and real threats if we don't, particularly for many places where we live and where we, which we love. Now, I want to give you a piece of good news as well, and that is we still have time to avoid dangerous climate change. We've got time, but the clock's ticking, and I'll come back to that in a sec. The other piece of good news is in Australia here and around the world, we're increasingly seeing people and governments start to take action, which is really encouraging. Um, we've been privileged as the Australian Conservation Foundation that we've been working with Mr Al Gore to help train Australians to give his uh, famous uh, PowerPoint presentation. Um, who would have thought a PowerPoint presentation could win an Academy Award at the movies, but there you go. Um, and 250 Australians are out there now giving his PowerPoint presentation and they're people from all walks of life in Australia. And in about 12 months, they've personally presented to over 120,000 people. And by September this year, they will have personally presented to about one in 100 Australians. And I can tell you their motivation and interest and engagement on these issues across all walks of life is fantastic. I also know through some of our own work as the Australian Conservation Foundation that when you provide information to people and give them an opportunity to change, people are very hungry to take action. We've got a little website called Who on Earth Cares that Kate Blanchett's been helping uh, drum up support on and people go on and take a few simple steps to reduce greenhouse emissions at home. Uh, and in a period of about uh, three to four months, 20,000 people came onto that website and just took some simple actions. It might be changing to energy efficient light bulbs. Um, it might be taking one less car trip a week and catching the bus uh, instead. It might be buying green power, which you can buy, you know, that then comes from certified renewable sources. Uh, and in just a brief period of time, those people took actions, those 20,000 people took actions that were the equivalent of taking 30,000 cars off the road each year. And the one response we had from people all the time is, hey, this isn't too hard. This is actually easy. We can make a big difference in our own lives. 